The lands have been ravaged by a four-year-long campaign. From Delhi to Jamshedpur, the fields remain aflame and evidence of the brutal onslaught of the Maharaja Ranjit Singh is everywhere in the form of piled bodies, soot and ash. Calcutta has been lost to the Sikh Empire, and I fear what the Maharaja may attempt to accomplish with the shipyards and naval bases left behind. We must prepare for the inevitable, as it seems the people of Punjab are intent on destroying everything we hold dear, uprooting the very systems we have encouraged for years to maintain order under the direction of the company. Their envoys treat with the princes and nawabs that we have helped place, and they taunt us with burgeoning trade out of the Arabian Sea and soon the Bay of Bengal. I am certain a new war is on the horizon, and though I have commissioned the expansion of our naval bases in Bombay and Andhra alike, I fear it might be too little too late. War reparations will drain our coffers for the next five years, but it is what will come next that I fear most. An excerpt from a letter from Gonville Maynard, Governor General of the East India Company, recipient unknown. Hey everybody, it's Party Elite! Welcome back to our Victoria 3 run, playing as the Sikh Empire, pursuing territory after territory from the East India Company in the hopes of securing India and then subjugating Great Britain. Last session got us the beautiful state of South Bengal after our massive war against the East India Company, but it also put us in a state of disrepair. Our economy is an absolute mess. We are in a huge amount of debt, but fortunately, at least our budget is in the positive right now and the aim of today's session is primarily going to be to make this number a bigger number a bigger green number specifically and to try and make this number a much smaller number as well the radicalism in our beautiful empire is becoming rather troubling it's causing a lot of issues across all of the interest groups in our empire so we really have to do something about both of these situations and fortunately our conquest of south bengal is going to help with at least one of those and we'll see if it can't help us with both one of the key concerns right off the bat is going to be getting all of our shipping lanes up and running again. You'll recall perhaps that we actually canceled all of those import routes during the war because they were simply costing us bureaucracy without actually shipping any goods after the East India Company managed to devastate all of our convoys. So the first order of business is going to be to actually see how our market is looking, assessing the situation, and then picking which goods to import now using the significantly larger number of convoys we have access to thanks to the the new port we have acquired in South Bengal, already bigger than the port we have built ourselves in Sindh, so that's going to make a very big difference in terms of trade and beyond that as well. If we do take a look at South Bengal, we'll very quickly see that uh, market access is a bit of an issue over here, and that's partly because of the infrastructure situation, so that's something we definitely have to keep in mind. But apart from that as well, turmoil is a significant issue here. We'll go ahead and get violent suppression going shortly after we're able to incorporate the state as soon as we finish this research of the central archives which will take about four more months but apart from this let's go ahead and take a look at some of these buildings of course south bengal has the aforementioned ports that are providing us with a significant number of convoys great to see it also has the naval base that we were hoping to acquire at a bit of a higher strength level but i'll take the eight flotillas however i don't want to take the expense that comes alongside it all so let's go ahead and take a look at the shipyards of south bengal and get them building military ships as well as civilian ships that'll hopefully bring this price down as we move forward in time to help us just keep government expenses as low as possible. Beyond that as well, we can take a look at the situation at the rice farms over here where fertilizer is lacking and as a result of that we're not seeing enough output of grain. Two things need to change over here. First of all, we need some fig orchards going so we can get some fruits coming through as well. And apart from that, let's go ahead and check out the livestock ranches over here and ensure that we do have intensive grazing ranches over here providing some fertilizer, but clearly that's not enough. So let's head on back to Punjab and get the livestock ranches over here using that same production method to produce even more fertilizer, making it tremendously cheap. We can also, of course, adjust some of the uh, wheat farms in Punjab to perhaps take advantage of soil enriching farming that will again consume some of the fertilizer having the wheat farms use fertilizer does increase the output of grain so there's no harm in doing that and if we actually go to our buildings and check out the wheat farms as a whole we can perhaps upgrade all of them to use the soil enriching farming and just make sure that they become a bit more productive and it looks like they all did from a quick glance over here. Let's also make sure Pashtunistan is producing citrus orchards as well, hopefully getting us some more fruits. And if we just take a look at the price over here really quickly, 
Hopefully we'll see this number go down in short order because it is a big contributor to people's overall upsetness. We could of course also use our massive investment pool to invest in some of these wheat farms. Let's go ahead and expand you by a little bit because it will help produce more fruits of course with each level we go up. And if we do take a look at perhaps the one over at Pashtunistan as well, we can go ahead and upgrade you too. It looks like the price has already been impacted which is great to see. However, South Bengal is still paying way too much and that's primarily because they don't have full market access. So that is something we're going to want to try and solve as soon as we can. And again, let's go back to the market screen over here and take a look at our major struggles. Perhaps as a bit of a surprise, I'm actually going to highlight paper first. Even though it doesn't look all that expensive, the fact of the matter is that as soon as we get ourselves central archives set up, we're going to use far more paper than we're using right now. And we want to keep the cost down, not just for our pops, but also for our government budget, right? We're trying to manage both radicalism and our budget at the same time. Now you might be thinking, are we simply going to import more paper? No. That's not the plan over here at all. The plan over here is instead to get our paper industry in Punjab to focus on sulfite pulping. Previously, I'd mentioned we don't actually have access to sulfur, so why would I be doing this? I'd be doing this because that will allow us to create some import routes from foreign markets, which if we have enough of a draw of demand, the level should skyrocket to a decent number and actually ship a decent amount of the resources through just the one trade route and that way saving us the bureaucracy cost of having multiple trade routes. But for the time being, let's let this demand set in and let's make sure that uh, the paper mills stay profitable because that is of course a concern as well. But in order to do all that, we'll have to move time forward and I'm just not ready for that quite yet because there is of course the matter of the iron over here which we'd like to establish an import route for as well. The British market will be very happy to provide a tremendous amount as will the French market. I don't like the reduced productivity but I'll take that for the time being. And We'll see if it needs some adjusting down the line, though hopefully as that kicks in, we'll see this uh, lack of goods disappear. Our tool workshops need to be upgraded as well, and my actual plan for doing that is to implement steel mills and to upgrade the tooling workshops as opposed to expanding them or importing more tools, so we'll leave that as is for the time being. Meanwhile, we'll take a look at our luxury furniture opportunities and try to import additional luxury furniture. I'm not sure, again, if we're going to see a nice uh, opportunity over here. Perhaps we should wait to see if any of these numbers actually go up by any amount, and then we'll go ahead and establish some of these trade routes, but apart from that, what else? can we do here? We can take a look at porcelain. Let's try and establish an import route from the Qing market. It should take no convoys, of course. We have a land connection, so that'll be nice and helpful, and hopefully that'll keep the prices down there. And beyond that, of course, now there is the interest in coffee and groceries and wine as well. So coffee can be brought in, I assume, from the Portuguese market. That's looking pretty good, I would say. And let's go ahead and bring in some of the wine from the Awadhi market. That is a surprisingly productive uh, supply route, so fair enough. We don't need too much. Again, the buy orders are just at three, so this is going to make wine dirt cheap here, and groceries are the same, but I wouldn't be surprised if our only options are, well, we have the French, so let's go with them. I would rather not treat with the East India Company or the British market if I can avoid it, of course. God knows when there's gonna be an embargo and when we shut each other's trade routes down, so just wanna be careful about that. Now, apart from imports, let's concern ourselves with exports as well. Let's not forget we did get rid of some extremely valuable money-making opportunities over here, especially with regards to liquor. Let's try and establish an export route here and as you can see, the Qing market continues to be a uh, sort of top demand market over here. So let's focus on them because they won't eat up any of our convoys. But we might also be able to export some liquor to the French here too. Make a decent bit of money off of that. That is wonderful to see. And again, our tariffs are going to kick in and make us a bit more money off of liquor as well. Especially as those trade routes upgrade over time. We'll see that 45 become a significantly larger number. So very much looking forward to that. And we can even consider exporting liquor to perhaps the Portuguese geese market as well. Uh, again, we do want to be careful not to overdo it because we want it to remain somewhat cheap for our local population as well. And it looks like we are very safe on that front. We have twice as much as we need. So let's keep that going, I suppose, while keeping an eye, of course, on our bureaucracy. The British market and the East India Company market, again, we're trying to avoid. Looks like nobody else is going to be able to level up, so let's keep it as is for the time being and just see how it grows. And it actually seems as though we can export paper right now, but I'm going to avoid it for the time being. Again, I just want to see how this new technology affects our actual situation, and then we'll reconsider our uh, decisions over here. But overall, I think we've made some good decisions with regards to our market, with our imports and exports. Let's go ahead and let time move forward. And as we do so, I just want to point out the sheer amount of devastation our war caused across 
East India Company territory. I mean, this is absolutely ludicrous. The amount of fighting that happened in East India Company Awadh resulted in almost 50% devastation. And look at how much damage that actually causes the reduced infrastructure, the highly increased mortality, the migration attraction reduction. Population over here is actually dropping right now rather significantly per week. So this is no joke. And over here, if we look at Awadh proper as well, which we did grant its liberty, is also losing its population and is also suffering from nearly 50% devastation. Beyond that, of course, Bihar saw a lot of trouble, 27% devastation, and North Bengal over here, 15% devastation. So I guess relatively less than I'd expected, but uh, we have done a decent bit of damage to the East India Company. And if we take a look actually at the East India Company, as we can see, they are, uh, you know, looking pretty worse for wear. I mean, their GDP is looking pretty hot and I hope to see a bit of a dip over here after we took South Bengal so let's keep an eye out for this they're number six worldwide whereas we are number seven worldwide so still a bit of work to do before we can overtake them but uh, I assure you we'll be doing that in more ways than one. And it took literally just a couple days for the paper mills to realize that we don't produce enough sulfur locally. So if we go to import them now, you'll see that these import routes will go to a higher level. And as the demand continues to increase, the level of the trade route will increase further and further. So we'll take a look at this in a moment's time after we've had an opportunity to see how this all plays out. And I'm fairly certain that we're going to see a significantly higher level sulfur import route than we first initiated. And folks, as we slowly watch this number hopefully grow. I just want to mention really quickly, if you've been enjoying this series and you would like to see it continue, please don't hesitate to let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. It really helps me understand what people are interested in watching on the channel. And if you have any thoughts or feedback you'd like to give, whether it's positive or it's with regards to things I can change to make the series even more interesting or entertaining to watch, feel free to let me know in the comments. I do read them all and I do try to uh, take them all to heart however I can and, and sort of apply them however I can as well. Beyond that as well, of course, if you've been enjoying this series and you would like to stay up to date with more, there's plenty to come. So don't hesitate to subscribe to the channel either. And if you're looking for people to play multiplayer with or just for people to share Victoria 3 stories with and stories from other Paradox games as well, our Discord is extremely active. So feel free to join the Discord linked in the description too. Just wanted to mention that really quickly as we hope to see again this grow. Seems as though it's stagnated a little bit, but that's okay because if we go back to our paper mills over here, we'll see that it seems as though we've reached a bit of an equilibrium. That's still fine. I don't mind that because that means we can go ahead and head on over to our government administration buildings again and switch South Bengal to start using filing cabinets too. Again, while we're not able to tax South Bengal yet, it will still produce more bureaucracy and this should in turn make paper a bit more valuable and hopefully encourage me to then take a look at, let's say, the South Bengal paper mills and have them use sulfite pulping too. And then once more, we'll see, again, there's a bit of a shortage in terms of productivity, which in turn should mean that our sulfur import trade route will now level up to level four. That's how this works, folks. The more demand there is, the more expensive it'll be in our local market and the more valuable it'll be for the foreign market to export to us. Let's see if we go ahead with encourage exports to increase the tariffs on imports. And let's just see what it does over here. We'll still grow to level four. So it seems as though demand is enough to keep sustaining a higher level. And if we keep adding more and more demand for sulfur, we'll even go to level five and perhaps beyond while still having those relatively high tariffs on the imports, helping us make a decent bit of money. I mean, if we take a look at this right now, we can see liquor has gone up to about 500. That'll continue to grow. Sulfur is getting a 776 and it's growing by the second over here. So I'm sure in a couple weeks time, these numbers will be a lot grander and this number will hopefully be a lot grander as well, literally and figuratively speaking, because I want to try and accumulate some let's call it debt relief so that I can get some construction going that won't be covered by our investment pools. Right now, the investment pool money is about to finish being used up for both of these wheat farm upgrades, which should be quite helpful in various ways. Fantastic stuff. Crystal glass has been unlocked. And if memory serves me correctly, we do have access to some glass making in Punjab, in fact. So if we want to get crystal glass going, we will need some lead, which again, isn't currently available locally. We are able to mine it if we want to. Just like sulfur, we are able to mine sulfur locally if we want to, but it might just be more viable to import it instead. However, I don't think we have the need to produce more glass right now, so we'll leave things as they are. Let's go ahead and take a look at this situation over here, looking like industrial barriers. Another event in Punjab. 
Factories in Punjab are refusing to hire Nepali people, owing to their status as second-class citizens in the Sikh empire. Very well, I suppose, as always, we will say that all hands are needed to build the future. As some of you pointed out in the comments, yes, I suppose all hands except for the English. I suppose the one time I chose uh, the option to discriminate, it just happened to be against the English, but it's because the other option was just going to absolutely destroy the happiness of multiple interest groups, and that just wasn't the viable option, unfortunately. And it seems as though the Bessemer process is now spreading towards us that's actually perfect the Bessemer process ties directly into steel mills we're not making that much money right now if we take a look at our situation with regards to the budget I just want to see if I missed a notification with regards to material waste I did that's on me, of course. Let's go ahead and make sure the military wages are just increased ever so slightly. That should stop them from being so upset. And even though it'll hurt us in the short run, shortly afterwards when material waste gets deactivated, we should see this number climb right back up as you just did by a whole 5k. That's still not enough money really to make me comfortable with uh, building a new structure. But you know what? Comfort be damned, we have to make progress, and sometimes progress happens at the cost of comfort. Let's get these steel mills going in Punjab. I would like to urbanize Punjab even further. It'll take 23 weeks of negative 3.59k, but again, the construction of the steel mill will allow us to upgrade our tooling workshops to actually make steel tools, which will make a huge difference with the affordability of tools and the resulting construction, etc., etc., moving forward. So let's not downplay the importance of this. And I knew it was going to happen. Enact censorship political movement has kicked off over here medium support and low radicalism so that's not too bad but uh, enact censorship is really not a very good uh movement to have happen. While it does give us extra authority, it slows down technology spread and also weakens our impact when suppressing interest group attraction. So we don't want that because there are definitely interest groups we want to suppress. We definitely want technology to spread as quickly as possible. And as much as some extra authority would be nice, I simply don't think it is the right call. On the topic of authority though, let's go ahead and get rid of our grain tax. I wanted to do that early on and let's replace it with taxes on opium, liquor, and perhaps fabric, and I believe that's all we can afford. Hopefully it'll uplift our populations and help them out. And again, as soon as we get this next tech researched, things are going to look a lot better than they look right now, or at least that's the hope. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this inactive trade route and this unproductive trade route as well. I just wanna make sure that the uh, actual productive trade routes are able to grow as much as they can because we might actually be hampering our overall gains just because we're trying to appease a few people with a couple of groceries, which they'll be able to substitute with other goods anyway. Well, it looks like the British are interested in South India again, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's only a matter of time before they announce their interest in North India as well. I was really hoping to avoid their involvement, but I wouldn't be surprised if they try to make a move against the uh, East India Company themselves to perhaps you know, try to make it a puppet again or something. They're interested in Persia as well, so they're kind of boxing us in at this point in time. Just a little nervous with regards to what they might get interested in uh, being involved in, actually. But on the topic of diplomacy, we should perhaps consider improving our relations with some of our neighbors. Again, we do want to try and make some of these guys our puppets moving forward. So with Baroda being conciliatory towards us, they're all well and good. We can perhaps get uh, Orissa liking us a bit more by improving relations there. They're antagonistic, but hopefully that'll change over time. And Kutch as well over here. Let's go ahead and improve relations there. Or uh, should we instead focus on... Yeah, you know what? I think that makes sense. And then when we try to acquire puppets, we'll try and acquire puppets who are near each other. So Orissa, Baroda, Kutch, uh, you know, we will be connected with regards to our markets. A bundle Khand as well is an option, but we're already seeing a reduced infamy decay rate there. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. And that should give us just about enough influence to uh, to, to be close enough to 25%. So I'll, I'll take this. This is fine by me. We could, of course, declare a rivalry somewhere and maybe gain some, uh, gain some influence by doing that. So sure, the East India Company, you're our rivals. I think the world knows this already. So let's go ahead and make it official. That'll give us plenty more influence. And you know what? At that point, let's fine. Go ahead and get uh, Bundelkhand over here with improved relations. And hopefully we can do something about this not so nice number because it's in the negative. Uh, but in, in due time, I'm sure it'll become uh, become positive enough for us to bring them under our fold. And there you have it, folks. Central archives have been unlocked. The increased taxation capacity is going to be very helpful. It already made a big difference with regards to this number up over here. But beyond that as well, of course, we're going to make a couple of changes with regards to our government administration buildings. As promised, standardized filing systems are going to kick in. It's going to require more paper, but it's going to provide us with significantly more bureaucracy and taxation capacity alike. If we take a look at Punjab right now, in fact, we'll see 
Taxation capacity is uh, really insufficient. Negative 78.4% tax collection is no joke. So hopefully as we upgrade that and as these numbers go up, we'll see these numbers go down. The same applies, of course, to South Bengal, where we'll be able to get that government administration building using the standardized filing system. And that will then result in a huge bureaucratic, uh, what's the opposite of a shortfall? Surplus, I suppose. Either way, we have a big, big number up over here, to put it simply, and we're going to use that big number to incorporate South Bengal, and this is going to make a very big difference to our economy. It does chew up a lot of that bureaucracy, unfortunately, and that is actually currently limiting the kinds of policies I'm willing to pass. Previously, I talked about getting schools going, but that'll cost us 386 bureaucracy, even at the lowest level. The same goes for if we wanted any police forces, that'll cost us 386 bureaucracy. So we just don't have the leeway right now hopefully soon as we continue to improve our government administration but uh, now is not the time for this unfortunately what it is the time for though is our new technology and finally we're going to invest in railways it'll hopefully go by quickly 32 months will feel like a very long time because it is a very long time but for the time being i just want to bring your eyes to our uh, states panel over here so you can see just how quickly south bengal starts to contribute to our economy again we're incorporating it it's not going to happen overnight obviously but with each tick you can see the slow increase of money we're getting from income tax in south bengal and of course this taxation revenue i shouldn't call it income tax but it includes poll taxes and all other kinds of taxes as well but all that stuff adds up pretty quickly and hopefully it'll make a very big difference very soon and it'll allow us to continue to invest in further construction activities and things like that because right now of course we're building that one steel mill and it is hurting our economy quite a bit i would very much like to be able to build without hurting our economy now why don't we use our investment pool to keep building up some of our other industries i say industries i of course mean uh, agricultural industries specifically uh, the opium plantations could perhaps use some upgrades we can continue to export these i'm sure for lots of money hopefully the opportunity presents itself somewhere at some point in time looking like a big no right now and i'm just not sure why that is maybe we just need a bigger differential between our uh, cost and sale price over here versus the uh, destination so in order to do that we need a much larger supply so upgrades to the opium plantations it shall be and again that money is coming right out of the investment pool which is continuing to grow quite fat quite quickly we're going to go ahead and get the uh, paper mills at delhi using sulfide pulping as well hopefully that'll further cheapen paper i just noticed the monthly price report over here showing the price of paper starting to go up a little bit just want to counteract that however we can because again paper directly reflects in goods for government buildings over here and we're spending a lot of money on paper let's try and bring some of those numbers down it will make a very big difference as far as our budget is concerned and uh, hopefully again by introducing sulfite pulping over here we'll see this import route become a little bit larger as well if we take a look at it down over here level four right now it's going to stay at level four any particular reason we need more convoys and because it's not going to make enough money fair enough it's a couple reasons then we could adjust the tariffs uh, but despite that we'll still need to provide some more convoys over here and i'm just not looking to upgrade a port at the moment because uh money so let's go ahead and keep those tariffs up just to make whatever money we can while we wait for that opportunity to upgrade our ports some of you have pointed out that i should perhaps chase after macron and that is a very good point uh for a couple of reasons actually one yes i do believe they have a port it's not a very high level port but it is a port two they do have opium plantations as well and three it's actually a part of baluchistan and that is one of the states we need in order to form the entirety of India. If we take a look at the culture screen over here and nation formation, uh, down over here, you'll find Baluchistan. If we actually manage to get it, then uh, it's one less state we have to worry about and we're like 90% of the way there, right? But of course, taking Macron will cost us a bit of infamy. They're a relatively small state, so it's not gonna cost us all that much. Just want to be careful about when I pull that trigger. I don't want it to happen at the expense of damage done to the East India Company. I really want to get North Bengal and a couple of other surprises I have planned for you uh, in the next war we declare in 1857. So I just want to be careful. Maybe after we do that, we'll go ahead and get Macron because I assure you some of our conquests that 
happen outside of North Bengal in the upcoming war will include the addition of more ports as well. But for the time being, again, we're a little limited because of the convoy count. The other option, of course, is to get rid of some of these other trade routes that are using convoys. I just don't know which ones I would like to remove. Looks like our journal has a new potential entry over here with central archives. All we need to pull this off is have 75% of our eligible buildings use the standardized filing system. So why don't we go ahead and uh, visit our government administration buildings and get sure Delhi using the standardized filing systems as well. That'll increase this number significantly. Kashmir and get that using the standardized filing system as well. A huge increase in the amount of paper we're consuming. So hopefully that's not going to get too expensive and too out of hand. But I would like to see this get completed and hopefully in a moment's time this event will trigger. There you have it, Central Archives completed. And that brings us this event here, filing cabinets. The use of filing cabinets in the government administration has drastically increased the effectiveness of state bureaucracy. The future isn't in flying like a bird, nor in roaring along in a train. No, the future is in filing. I love bureaucracy. I'm assuming this is uh, Senator Palpatine. You know, I love democracy, except bureaucracy. Or we can store information about our citizens. It'll take 17 years to research this thing. Uh, it is one of our next steps, which means we are able to invest in it. Here's the thing. This plus 5% will only last 5 years. This plus 3 K will make a huge difference uh, in the much longer term. But you know what? Let's store information about our citizens. And uh, how much time will this take now instead? 16 years. You know what? That's not too shabby. That's not too shabby at all. At the same time, as this construction comes to an end, we're going to see our economy actually recover once more. Nice to see. And uh, hopefully South Bengal will continue to contribute more and more. But let's pay attention to the steel mills we just finished building here. The steel mills will, of course, be able to use the uh, Bessemer process as soon as that research is done. That will require a bit more iron. So that industry might need a bit of support moving forward. However, you'll see, of course, steel is uh, dirt cheap right now, and that's because we're not actually using it anywhere. Immediately, we're going to turn to our tooling workshops and get them using steel tools that should produce significantly more tools, which is great to see. And that will then encourage the production of steel at the steel mill, because again, it becomes so ludicrously valuable because it's so rare right now. But just as always, this just means we're going to employ more people. Productivity is going to go up, and that will then allow us to... Uh, Ma sort of balance out the pricing over here. And the other thing I really want to investigate is exactly who we're allowing to get employed in our nation. Again, all this stuff has a huge impact on the ideologies, the interest groups, and the actual policies that our future nation will encourage. So we just want to be careful about the choices we make over here. And perhaps this session at some point, or maybe next session, we'll take a look at who supports which interest group and how exactly we want to shape the very near future of our nation. Right now, what I know most is that we uh, definitely want to try and suppress these landowners as best as possible. And as was recommended in the comments, actually, I'm going to go ahead and pin some of these guys because it was pointed out it'd be nice to see at least some of the major players and how they're doing in our uh, in our nation. So I've got these guys over here. Let me know what you think about that. If I should just get all of them up over here, I mean, it's not going to take up that much real estate, right? It's just on the side. So let me know how you feel about that and we'll uh, we'll consider uh, you know adjusting that if need be. But this is looking all right. Not amazing by any stretch of the imagination, but it's looking all right. What we could actually do is save ourselves some money over here by stopping the use of paper at uh, the Kashmiri government administration building and perhaps the one at Delhi as well. Again, we don't have to be hugely in the positive over here. Even slightly in the positive is enough in order to avoid tax waste. So how about at Delhi as well? We go back to filing cabinets. Yeah, you can see the number going higher and higher over here as we're spending less and less on paper, I assume, is the cause. Yes, absolutely. Why? Fantastic stuff. Maybe, uh, maybe South Bengal as well. No, we, we will need to stay positive over here, though that did look nice. Oh, you know what, actually? Maybe we stick with this. Maybe we stick with this for the time being until we recover a little bit. And just another look at our GDP over here. Things are looking pretty good. Still climbing up, a little bit of wiggling. And let's take a look at the EIC's GDP as well. They are... There we go. There's that huge drop I was hoping to see after the takeover of South Bengal. Beautiful stuff. They're still number six worldwide. I mean, that is a huge GDP, uh, but we don't even have to double ours to catch up with them. So that's very exciting. Plus, we should consider the fact that we are rank nine, a major power. Again, we are now a recognized major power. Don't forget. So this feels all the more sweet. And would you look at that on the topic of things that are sweet? 
our obligation that we owe to France has expired. They were never able to actually make use of it. Now, one thing that's actually slipped my mind is I should definitely go in with the decree to uh, use violent suppression in South Bengal. We need a bit more authority in order to do that. Do we still have? We do. We're still using enlistment efforts in Punjab. Let's get rid of that and get the violent suppression going in South Bengal instead. Again, we're starting to make money off of South Bengal finally, so we really want to reduce the effect of that tax waste from turmoil over here. That will make a bit of a difference. I think it already has, in fact. And South Bengal, as you can see, is starting to make some serious progress. It's already making half as much as Pashtunistan and Baluchistan. So, you know, in no time, it's going to become one of our major producers of wealth. Looks as though uh, material waste has activated again. So once more, we have to go back to our budget and give the armed forces even more money. Is that going to result in a net positive? It is. See, as soon as material waste gets deactivated, this just skyrocketed by another 3K. So I, I guess we just have to keep appeasing the, uh, the armed forces until this radical count goes down a little bit. We're trying our best over here. The negative 1.85 million is definitely a nice sight. The standard of living seems to be helping out over here. Again, a huge part of this bump is a result of uh, the situation in South Bengal. If we take a look at our population over here, if we take a look at the lower strata, their standard of living has gone up. Their overall cost of living seems to be lower on average than the average. And the middling strata over here, they suffered a fair bit during the war, slowly making a recovery, but they're paying a bit too much for what? Porcelain, clothes, furniture, opium, Fair enough, looks like they're a fan of opium as well. Luxury furniture is way too expensive, and coal as well for heating. All right, good to know. And if we take a look at the upper strata, they're paying a little bit too much as well here and there. Luxury furniture, porcelain, and furniture seem to be the biggest offenders alongside coal. Very well. We'll go ahead and get the coal mines using the condensing engine pump. Let's try and get some more coal out of there. And the iron mines should perhaps start using the condensing engine pump as well. Uh, again, we are producing more tools than we were before, and the intent of that was to allow these guys to upgrade and start producing more and more iron and coal and stuff as well. So let's get all that going and hopefully that'll make a significant enough difference to people's overall happiness. Beyond that as well, I think the price of meat and stuff is all good right now, but we could lower it a bit further. Perhaps the uh, livestock ranches across the board can focus on using slaughterhouses instead and we'll just keep an eye on the price of tools, of course, if the tooling workshop needs another upgrade or if some of these ranches can stop using the slaughterhouse will make adjustments as needed but again just really focusing on trying to keep people happy right now to reduce radicalization already we're seeing down to 19.9 million i suppose that tick just happened uh, let's go ahead and take a look at luxury furniture and see if we can't get an import going over here doesn't seem to be all that profitable and i don't really want to expand the furniture manufacturers in punjab either because of just how expensive it'll be for the time being let's see if our recent changes with regards to coal make enough of a difference first and then if we have to invest in the furniture manufacturers we will and down at sindh we have a donation of knowledge Ganda Dillon is offered to spend some of their personal wealth to fund the creation of a university in sindh though this will likely give the industrialists some influence the Gunda Dillon University will be a proud bastion of learning in these times of rapid progress where knowledge truly is power. You know what? I think this is a wonderful idea. I mean, I don't mind the industrialists. I don't love them either necessarily. There you have some, uh, some ideologies that I don't think will work well for us. But overall, they seem to be uh, a good bunch if they're willing to fund an entire university. Uh, if we don't give them the platform, it'll just reduce their approval, which isn't really a concern, I suppose. But if we uh, allow them to build a university, we end up the university and they start drawing perhaps some pops away from say landowners and other groups that we don't want people to join uh you know what that sounds like a very good idea to me so yes a wonderful idea indeed and i do believe it'll be built immediately over here yes wonderful so again just as a reminder this will consume additional paper but it'll turn that paper into additional innovation and qualifications as well to help with social mobility and with just research overall so this is a very wonderful event to have happen and i'm glad that we actually got it to trigger just wanted to point out really quickly the amount of income we're making from tariffs on sulfur as promised a while ago now i suppose sulfur is making us a lot of money through tariffs and it looks as though liquor is actually our highest earner as far as tariffs are concerned so absolutely huge stuff perhaps we should consider producing even more liquor we are the number six producer worldwide i mean hey that does uh seem like an opportunity to gain some more prestige, right? Ah, uh, it looks like subsistence farming is what's producing so much liquor, and that explains why we have so much of it. The option does exist to build some uh, food industries, but it will not actually be built by our 
investment pool. So I think I'm going to avoid that for the time being. There are other things I would like to invest in instead, but eventually we will need some food industries, I think, uh, because, hey, if the opportunity is there, you know, I suppose we should take it. And we do also want to make sure we're getting rid of the subsistence farms and the reliance on subsistence farms to just reduce the number of peasants that we have in place, right? And it seems as though medical degrees have been unlocked next. Again, we cannot really invest in any institutions because of our bureaucracy situation. At the same time, down over here, you'll see stock exchange has begun spreading to us, and that will actually reduce the bureaucracy cost of trade routes as well as make us more competitive in our trade routes. So if we're trying to jostle for position as far as import or export is concerned, we'll have just a bit more power on that front. But perhaps more importantly, it'll save us some bureaucracy. So I'm looking forward to getting this within the next 9 to 14 months, while at the same time, we're almost done getting railways in about the next 14 months or so as well. As the investment pool continues to grow, we should make sure we continue to actually use it to invest in things. So I want to go ahead and upgrade the coffee plantations in Sikraj Putana, and let's go ahead and upgrade the opium plantations in Delhi as well. If we take a quick glance at our population situation, you'll see that uh, the cost of both coffee and uh, opium could use a little bit of help. I mean, yes, coffee is already cheaper than the average, but hey, if we can bring the price a little bit lower at the expense of the investment pool, then why not? But opium definitely needs to have its cost brought down. I mean, a few things need to have their cost brought down. I'm not as panicked as I was earlier because, hey, this is looking better and better. But uh, hopefully, again, as soon as our economy recovers a bit more, we'll be able to invest the government's money in some of these other opportunities like, you know, the furniture manufacturers and, and things like that. But for the time being, I mean, if we can get the price of things like opium to drop, then why not, right? And we can actually also probably get the price of services to drop here and there as well. Let's take a look at the urban center at Delhi, for example. And if we try and get the market squares going, what does the uh, situation become here? I mean, it looks like it's sustainable. We'll give it some time, obviously, because who knows how this will switch. Uh, yeah, glass panes are very expensive, but we are still able to maintain this. We could take a look at perhaps establishing an import route over here. We'll see if uh, requiring more will allow us to make bigger import routes. Though the reality is, of course, the convoy count is getting in our way over here. Nonetheless, let's head on over to Punjab and see if we can't get the urban center here as well to start using market squares. Or perhaps instead of that, we'll go ahead and chase after gas streetlights because we are producing a decent bit of coal. This will make it significantly more expensive though. Yikes, I don't know if I want to do that because that might hurt a lot of our businesses. Fair enough, let's stick with the uh, the market squares then and, and just see if we can't keep this sustainable. Uh, apparently the answer is no, fair enough. We're gonna go ahead and cancel that then. One is enough for the time being and we'll just see how that evolves the situation. And perhaps again, when the economy is in a better state, we'll prioritize coal mines as well as, you know, the furniture manufacturers and everything else we're trying to prioritize. Tools are becoming extremely expensive for the time being. That's just because we're doing all this construction. But in two weeks time, I assume we will see the price of tools drop ever so slightly. So let's go ahead and speed time up a little bit just to watch that happen in real time, so to speak. That's one week, one more week to go and we're going to see this drop in price. Yeah, looking good. Fantastic stuff. And hey, the economy is looking healthier and healthier as each day passes. And it seems as though there is an issue here with Kutch. If you want peace, the armed forces suggest a more hardline foreign policy towards Kutch due to our poor relations. I suppose we could highlight them as the enemy. The option does exist to simply avoid escalating this, but the armed forces are upset at us enough already so uh, let's go ahead and set aside polite formalities and assign them as the enemy a little unfortunate i would have liked to make them friends but uh, not at the cost of our control over our own military personnel obviously man the investment pool still has a ton of money let's go ahead and invest more of that into these opium plantations again if we can just bring these numbers down things will be fantastic and why don't we take a look at the situation over here get rid of the consumption tax on say liquor that'll give us enough to enact the decree for encouraged agricultural industry in Delhi, and that should also allow us to actually encourage the resource industry in Kashmir. I suppose I can't do that because I need a hundred authority for some reason. Why is that? That doesn't make any sense. Either way, we'll leave it be, I suppose, then, uh, because I just wanted to get some more coal out of Kashmir, but hey, it is what it is. This increased throughput will hopefully further decrease the price. It looks like there was a huge dip there, so that's promising, and in one more week's time, we should see another dip, hopefully a substantial one, as more people get employed at the upgraded opium plantation here, and again, that'll just hopefully help people uh, be able to afford opium a bit more cheaply, and that'll hopefully allow them to 
Again, just de-radicalize, just ever so slightly. Just be a bit happier. That's all I'm asking them to do. We hit our 19 million mark over here for radicals, which is promising. And the British are no longer interested in the Persia region once more. That's quite good because I was kind of tempted to, uh, as I said earlier, perhaps conquer Macron, and that takes Great Britain out of the picture. I was also tempted to maybe, maybe try and puppet Persia. And uh, this, again, takes Great Britain out of the picture. And it should be a relatively easy war for us to fight. And their GDP is nothing to laugh at. I mean, they make a decent bit of money in the area. They also, I believe, produce a decent amount of products that we could take advantage of as well. So it might be a good idea. Though at the same time, it might also eat away at some of our currently finely sustainable, finely managed resources. So I just want to be careful about a move like that. I'd love to hear your thoughts. It kind of sends us in the opposite direction, but it is an opportunity to get a puppet and to actually increase how much money we're making through our diplomatic pacts. I think we should primarily stay focused on the East India Company because war is just about two years away at this point in time. But again, and as always, I would love to hear your thoughts and uh, see how, how y'all feel about the decisions we're making over here as the radicals continue to drop in number and uh, we continue to make more and more money. And we've unlocked rifling. I mean, again, that allows our arms industries to produce some more small arms if we want them to. Taking a look at our market right now, what is more expensive? Small arms are at 75 and artillery is at 94. So, oh, you know what, actually? It's an increase in small arms without a reduction in the production of artillery. So that just makes obvious sense. Let's head on over to our arms industries and get both of them using rifles and perhaps we should get both of them producing cannons as well. What do we have over here? I say both. We have like four. My goodness, what have I been doing? Let's go ahead and get these guys, yes, producing cannons as well and we'll take a quick look and see just how that impacts pricing over here because we might need to uh, change our mind on that front. Rifling was completed as well. It seems that is an event that we have access to over here now in South Bengal. The change in large scale production from smooth bore muskets to rifles in the arms industries in South Bengal has ushered in a new era for small arms production in the Sikh Empire. Even from 1,000 yards, you can still take the shot. Forward artillery positions can be harassed, bayonet charges stopped before they have even commenced. The advantages are innumerable. Unless we develop sufficient manufacturing capabilities to produce these weapons, we are bound to face disaster on the battlefield. That Calcutta arsenal shall be famed throughout the world, or the Sikh Empire shall be at the forefront of military innovation. So this will give us 3k progress towards repeaters, which uh, we do have access to, and repeating rifles for the arms industry further adds to the number of small arms they're producing per week, which is not a bad idea. Uh, so that's a nice one. We also get uh, the increased throughput in South Bengal. Otherwise, we could uh, say that the Calcutta Arsenal shall be famed throughout the world, giving us uh, extra throughput in South Bengal and also improving migration attraction. Again, I feel like this only lasts nine years, but uh, this technology, while it'll, you know, be paired with something that lasts nine years, this technology itself will last, you know, forever, so to speak. So that's something to consider, modernizing the arsenal, how we go about doing that, and at the same time, logistics has begun to spread, which will allow us to conscript more battalions, which is rather helpful, as we've seen time and time again through multiple wars. Now, I only have three months to make a decision on modernizing the arsenal, but uh, I'm just not sure which way I want to take it, as we uh, see the situation over here especially. The extra throughput might be nice, it will allow us to perhaps uh, stop doing rifling in some place or the other while still acquiring the same amount of rifles uh, because of the increased throughput. But all we really need to do is increase the steel output. So if we take a look at the situation at these steel mills and we consider how long it'll take for the Bessemer process to be researched, which is just 10 to 16 weeks away, then perhaps what we can do is consider reducing the need for steel at the arms industries in Punjab and maybe that'll sort of take some of the pressure off of all of the other arms industries. And once we get the Bessemer process available, we'll go ahead and uh, and flip this back to using the new rifling production method and just reduce the prices of all these goods because again, that'll help reduce the cost of goods for military buildings and uh, keep making us more money. And just very quickly on the topic of making us more money, South Bengal over here is making us more money than Pashtunistan and Baluchistan combined, right? 2.24 plus 2.89 is about four. Okay, no, I lied. It's about five point something. But listen, we're getting there. We're getting very close. It's almost caught up to Kashmir. It's almost caught up to Delhi. It's over half of Delhi's uh, tax output. It's almost caught up to Sindh as well. I mean, 
South Bengal, I think, was the best target we could have chased after during that war, and I'm very glad we have it. And in 32 months' time, it'll be fully incorporated, and in just a short few weeks, we'll actually be able to get its infrastructure up and running properly as well in order to further help us give it access to the Sikh market. And of course, we'll also consider getting this government administration building some more support by expanding it a bit further perhaps and improving the bureaucracy here and just further helping the taxation capacity, reducing the tax collection penalty as well. To get back to the task at hand though, let's go ahead and modernize the arsenal by making the Sikh Empire the forefront of military innovation. It would have taken nine years, but after investing in it in this way, repeaters will instead take eight years to research if and when we decide to do so, or perhaps we'll just wait until it spreads instead. On the topic of military equipment and keeping the armed forces happy, let's go ahead and take a look at our policies because there's a law that I want to pretend to want to pass in order to make them happy. See, if we take a look at our budget really quickly, the military wages are eating into our wealth by a significant margin. And again, just as a reminder, the main reason we're doing that is because we cannot have the armed forces be too unhappy because of material waste. However, if we try to pass a law that they like, you'll see over here because of their endorsement of the law, that negative one becomes a positive nine. And of course, when we change our budget, this number will change a bit further as well, but they'll be far away from getting material waste waste activated and even though I don't really want to pass the dedicated police force just quite yet it is quite helpful if it does happen to pass because as you'll see here the percentage of radicals from standard of living decreases will drop by five percent and there's also a hit to state penalties from turmoil both good things whereas I believe the baseline law enforcement institution also reduces state penalties from turmoil. So basically all of our states are in a state of turmoil. This is a very good thing to have. The only reason I don't want to get it too soon is because of the bureaucracy cost. That 473 is no joke. But my hope here is that we'll actually struggle to enact it because there's only a 16% chance of the uh, law passing anytime soon. And that means it'll take a fair bit of time. Hopefully we'll have South Bengal fully incorporated. We'll get rid of our shortfall of bureaucracy. We'll be able to get more uh, administrative buildings producing more bureaucracy as well. And all things will be fantastic when the time comes to actually pull the trigger on our police force. who will then proceed to shut down dissidents and uh, further help our uh, gains as the effects of turmoil are once more again further reduced. So. Fingers crossed that that all works out nicely, but perhaps most importantly, yes, we are going to now be able to reduce the investment we have for military wages. I think we might be able to bring it down to this tier over here. Let's go ahead and take a look at our armed forces. They'll still be happy, it seems, so that sounds good to me. I don't need anything from them. We'll still get their veteran consultation when we let time move forward a little bit because of their happiness, and that's fine. That's all well and good as long as they're not causing us material waste or... Uh, financial situation should look pretty good moving forward. So let's go ahead and move forward. And as we start to recover from this uh, horrendous situation and this terrifying amount of debt, I, I do think it's about time that we start doing some construction. Now again, the investment pool is looking pretty good as it always does these days. So why don't we go ahead and get some more opium plantations going. I say we go ahead and build a pair of them right away. It'll take about seven to eight weeks. We'll let that happen. And after it's done and after the iron and tools end up going back to a regular price, we'll go in and do some construction of our own. And that's not all we want to do over here. Again, with a focus on reducing radicalism, it's time to fire some people. Now here's where you're thinking, wait, hang on a second, how does that benefit radicalism? Firing people is actually a cause for increased radicalism, and you'd be absolutely right. As you can see over here, people being fired from buildings and people being fired from buildings where they had ownership shares can cause some radicalism. But the thing is, if we actually enable some of these more advanced production methods and reduce the number of employees at a building, that building will typically, by and large, increase its productivity and increase as a result of that productivity its average annual wages as well. And if we're paying out more wages, it means all of the people working at that building have more spending money. So even though goods might be too expensive because we can't afford or we can't find ways to reduce their prices, the population has more money to spend on those goods. And so they're still making a net positive income. At the same time, as their income goes up, you guessed it, so too does their income tax. So we've got a bit of a cycle going between these two things over here by increasing the productivity 
of our buildings and i think the time has come to pull the trigger on some of these now of course the cost as you can see is going to be hugely impacted as far as tools and then coal are concerned as well but uh, hey that's a risk i'm willing to take for the time being let's keep our eyes on some of these numbers 29.1 and 20.6 become 32.7 and 23 like that is no joke and we can see the productivity over here makes this the number three furniture manufacturer in the world that is no joke ladies and gentlemen we can also take into consideration the tooling workshops over here and if we just take a look at this number here when we make the change we'll get a quick idea of just how much of a difference it makes to the productivity of that building and this is now the number one most productive tooling workshop in the world as well and productivity by its nature results in a higher average annual wage so let's keep doing some of that the paper mills as well can use the water tube boiler Ooh, that might actually have been a bad idea it looks like south bengal loses its uh, productivity there so let's go back to hand assembly for these guys again it's not a one size fits all solution it wouldn't be a fun game if you were just clicking the same thing over and over again and got the results you wanted you have to adjust according to the circumstances obviously so just paying attention to exactly what works and where and making sure we're applying these changes to maximize the wealth generation for our population harvesting tools at all of these farms is probably a bad idea for the marginal decrease we actually saw there because again that eats into tools we can take a look at the rest of our options after the railways are actually ready to go because a large number of these guys rely on rail transportation but that is still a ways away because generating transportation is going to be a difficult industry to set up i'll see if we can't uh import some of the resources we'll need along the way but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there first we have to actually build the bridge and before that we have to actually get the technology needed to build said bridge in the first place let's let time move forward money's looking pretty good right now that 32.7k is nice and hopefully we'll see radicalism drop at a decent rate as well as we've boosted overall net incomes and yes we've fired quite a few people and i think we just saw uh this number tick up a little bit i don't know if i missed it or if i'm just imagining things but hopefully overall we see progress as opposed to regression obviously all right with the opium plantations in place and with the investment pool looking still somewhat healthy why don't we go ahead and invest in a port at south bengal we can no longer upgrade the one at sindh it's maxed out but the one at south bengal is still able to go up by a few levels and we do have a bit of a shortfall of convoys. Having a few more would go a very long way, I think, in allowing us to expand some of our trade routes. As you can see, we're pretty much capped out. Excellent railways have been unlocked. And as you can see, this unlocks a bunch of production methods across the board for a bunch of buildings. However, all of those production methods require us to provide transportation. And in order to get transportation, we have to build railways. And for railways to actually function, they need plenty of coal and engines, which in turn need to be produced in motor industries, which we have none of. So, like I said, it's a pretty long chain before we're able to take advantage of all these uh, various production methods. But I'm really hoping we're actually able to import those engines and produce railways and the trains and transportation without the rest of the entire production chain i'm fairly certain if memory serves me correctly railways are able to be built using the investment pool so that's fantastic let's get the one in south bengal going right off the bat over here it'll take 23 weeks to build but it will increase the infrastructure ever so slightly and of course that will make a decent difference with regards to its connection to the seek market right now it is just 67 percent having a higher connection to the seek market will allow it to have goods at a lower price and provide goods at a more reasonable price as well so that's all good stuff. Just got to keep an eye on this investment pool because we're maybe pulling a little bit too much away from it for the time being. 28.4k. Yes, it's going to last like two weeks and then uh, we're going to start paying for this out of pocket from the government's own funds. That's fine though. That's fine though. We've saved so much money on so much construction. A little bit of investment right now is not the end of the world, but let's also invest in our next bit of research here. Again, with our focus on finances, I think central banking is the next step here. It'll take about three years to research, so we'll be done shortly after the war begins against the EIC, and so we'll probably uh, need this desperately when it finally gets unlocked. It'll increase our minting. It'll also reduce loan interest rates, so perfect timing, I think, to have both of those happen. Central Central banking it is three years to research I'll gladly take it and uh, as as we you know recover from the war afterwards as well it'll greatly help us I think just accumulate wealth a bit faster too it's not just about funding the war effort but everything that comes afterwards as well of course 
Alright, so as you can see, we are now paying for most of the construction goods out of pocket. However, the investment pool transfer does continue. Even though the investment pool itself is at zero, it is still generating 3.73k per week, but it's immediately transferring that to the government for the purpose of building our two structures that we currently have ongoing. So we're going to keep that as is. And at the same time, if we actually take a look at the armed forces, you'll see they're quite happy. And that means that we can reduce their overall wages by another step and avoid making them unhappy happy just slightly increases our overall balance and if we take a look at our barracks for example in Punjab we'll see that these guys are basically all trained up so I don't think we have to worry about the training rate right now of course we'll want to remember to switch that back when the time comes to go to war but for the time being we should be a-okay and I would very much love to actually not just switch it back up to get the armed forces to stop uh, being neutral and, 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 and just to get their training rates back up but I would also very much like patriotic fervor because it does make a very big difference we I don't think I've had a chance to take advantage of it just quite yet, but it's just been so challenging uh, with all the radicalism and how badly it affects the armed forces in particular. Huh, the leader of the armed forces has actually died. Puma Dillon has left us, and in his place comes Alexander Gardner, the royalist, the grand general. Oh boy, well that's an interesting change. I don't think any of his traits have an impact on either the approval rating or on the overall clout over here, so that's all well and good. Nothing to worry about or be excited about, I suppose, but hey, it is what it is. Cool to see that switch actually take place. Meanwhile, over here, we have industrial grade materials. The industrialists find the high price of steel in the capital an impediment to their ambitions and would like us to prioritize importing it. My business associates abroad say I run my business with an iron fist. It may sound intimidating, but it is in fact a rather humiliating joke at my expense. They're looking to imply that I'm getting rusty. Okay, that's actually funny. And kudos to whoever wrote this one. I like this one a lot. Uh, we'll find a source of this vital material for the modern age. We'll uh, ask us to set up steel import or their ambitions should first be to make steel, not use it. This will actually upset the industrialists. Are we worried about upsetting the industrialists? If they get tax avoidance going, then we're going to start seeing reduced tax income for manufacturing, which really is not ideal. So uh, we will find a source of this vital material for the modern age. I mean, it's a good idea either way. I would rather not actually have to import it, but let's set up steel import. It doesn't look like there are too many uh, requirements to it, so fair enough. Just need to import steel? Sure. I mean, that's easy enough to do. Establish import route over here, and we'll go ahead and pull from the British market. It's arguably just temporary and the convoy count is really low still and that's mainly because we are still trying to finish building this port in three weeks time we'll have quite a few more convoys available and that should allow some of these trade routes to grow and hopefully they'll grow the tariffs we get alongside them the biggest concern of adding that route was actually the uh, extra tax waste that we just got tacked on over here but hey in a short amount of time south bengal will have been completely incorporated and we won't have to worry about that for much longer and there you have it set up steel import completed i'll take it it gives us plus two to the industrialists overall approval i believe from the secured desired import so that's fantastic no complaints for me on that front but on this front i think you will hear a complaint what do we have over here a proposal for a trade agreement from the great ting see here's the thing as nice as that sounds fact of the matter is a vast majority of our tariff income is a result of of trading with the Great Ting. So I actually think I'm gonna decline this. And it's a big bummer because at the beginning of this campaign, you know, what, three or four episodes ago now, whenever it was, or whatever number we're at right now, I said this would be a good idea for us. But hindsight is always 2020, I suppose, and this is actually a terrible idea. No other way to put it. So I will be declining. Maybe down the line at some point we'll reconsider this, but I assure you accepting this would have cost us a pretty penny as the uh, tariffs that we collect from all those trade routes that we have with the Great Ting would have completely disappeared, and that's not something I'm willing to surrender. Not a chance at all. I mean, look at some of this tariff income. Are you are you kidding me? I'm not going to throw all this stuff away. Not at all. On the flip side, of course, having that trade agreement means that our trade centers are going to become more profitable and they'll be able to ship more goods without worrying about the cost of, you know, paying those tariffs. But that's not what I have trade for the Great Ching with. I mean, that's one of the reasons in some cases, in the rare case, but the time being right now, 
I, I think it's uh, the tariffs are much more important to us, so the trade agreement can definitely wait. All right, here we go. The ports should be completed in just a moment's time, and hopefully we'll get some more convoys out of this one. And that should, again, see the uh, growing of some of our trade routes and the subsequent growing of some of our tariffs that we're collecting. Money's looking pretty good as well now that one of these constructions has been completed. Of course, the uh, railway still needs to be done, and yes, slowly but surely we're seeing the trade routes uh, get access to more convoys and hopefully we'll see more of them get used up as more of these guys actually upgrade as well and i mean you can see the changes over here we went from what 1546 to 1656 so clearly some of these guys are upgrading and i do believe we'll see a slight change to our tariffs as well i believe we were at 7.88 now we're at 8.1 so marginal changes but i'll take anything i can get obviously and if we take a quick look at our state's situation as well south bengal is producing so much money for us this is fantastic to see and as we continue to improve the situation in south bengal and uh, maybe as we get the dedicated police force in place the reduction of turmoil and the reduction of the tax waste from the turmoil is going to continue to make a bigger and bigger difference. Looks like the political movement to enact censorship has been disbanded. That's great to see. That should reduce radicalism as well. So please, dear Lord, continue to apply some of this downward pressure over here and free us from all this trouble. Well, this is something that might be very relevant to us in the very near future, but Great Britain has started a take treaty port diplomatic play against the Ottoman Empire. Don't like the sound of that. Again, our plan is to eventually subjugate Great Britain, so the stronger they get now, the more we'll have to deal with later. They've already taken a bit of territory down over here. They've puppeted Lahej and the Qasimid state, I believe, and now they're trying to make some moves up over here against the Ottoman Empire as well. They're just making moves that make me a little uncomfortable. Thought I'd note that down for uh, future reference. And of course, a new political movement comes in the place of the previous one. They want to enact landed voting. Medium support, very high radicalism, so we might actually see a revolution over here. How do you intend to make this work when we have a monarchy? Because again, governance principles are separate from the distribution of power. So how do you intend to reconcile the monarchy with uh, with landed voting? Like, what are you what are you voting for? What are you what are you trying to what are you trying to do here? Those who own land or capital property are given a vote for what? Your king? You think that's how this system works? Shut up and sit down. Get that radicalism down. I will crush this rebellion if they try something funny. All of our generals are either from the armed forces interest group or from the rural folk interest group, which means none of the people that are interested in enacting landed voting are involved in actually leading our military, so we should be A-OK. -okay. And the railway has come to South Bengal. Folks, this is a joyous moment. And at the same time, the Bessemer process is unlocked as well. Wow, keeping me real busy game. Let's go ahead and take a look at our steel mills first because this is an easier conversation to simply flip this switch up to this and produce some more steel. And at the same time, let's go ahead and flip this switch up to the water tube boiler and hopefully go from 34.5 to 39.0. Sure, that sounds good to me. And uh, this average annual wage went up as well. I guess it doesn't go back down when you flip it back and forth. But either way, uh, I saw it go up. Good stuff. We're also the number one most productive steel mill in the world. Good stuff. Now, back to the railway. As you can see, coal is ludicrously expensive, so perhaps we should go ahead and invest in the coal mines at uh, Kashmir. I do believe there are only ones. They are indeed, so let's make sure these babies are upgraded. Again, the reduced access is obviously causing trouble, but uh, they're expensive across the board over here. So even though uh, South Bengal is seeing slightly higher prices than everywhere else, it's still expensive everywhere else as well, so it's not like uh, it's not like we're in a good position there. Apart from that, though, railways also need engines, and while right now it's pretending like this stuff's not expensive, fact of the matter is we don't have engines in our nation. So let's establish an import route here, and hopefully somebody will be willing to cut us a deal over here. Let's go ahead and uh, give it some time. Let this uh, point out that there is a shortage. And then we'll take a look at the trade routes we can establish because, again, we desperately need transportation for a variety of benefits we can get. We are able to flip this to government run to make sure that as opposed to capitalists, we have bureaucrats being employed. 
and I think I quite like the sound of that. Plus, it seems as though it'll generate a bit more money if we make that substitution, so government run it shall be. And apart from that, we also are able to get wooden passenger carriages. It'll start consuming some wood, uh, but it will also produce more transportation while decreasing the employment count of clerks and machinists alike. Let's go with the wooden passenger carriages because again, we're, I think, primarily focused on getting more transportation over here for the time being. But yes, let's see the uh, warning signs flare up over here as time goes on. It's only Saturday right now, but the moment the next week starts, I believe we'll see the warnings. There you go. So let's now try to establish an import route and still nothing, eh? And it looks like it's because of tariffs. I just wonder if we go ahead and flip this to protect domestic supply to completely get rid of the tariffs on imports. I just wonder if that will allow us to maybe get these guys to go a bit higher. Still nothing, eh? Still not enough. Interesting. Well, let's get this going with a French market nonetheless, because I think even a little bit will go a long way in satiating the market and its needs. It might just be the fact that there are no buy orders showing until the uh, employees start to show up in larger numbers. All right, it looks like baking powder has begun to Spread. That'll be quite handy when we eventually set up our food industries, if we ever have the time and money to do so. At the same time, the Maharaja has to intervene in the political process as the dedicated police force conversation has been a little stagnated. We could advise the Maharaja against it here. It would do more harm than good. But at the same time, I wonder at this point in time, do we not want the dedicated police force? South Bengal is just 23 months away from being incorporated. This would take 285 days, so just short of a year from, uh, from being enacted if the next dice roll sees success. Is that a risk I'm willing to take? You know what, folks? I think it is. The Maharajas will be done because I'm sort of on the fence here. There are benefits to the dedicated police force. The only downside is if it happens too soon and eats away at our bureaucracy. So I'll take that chance and hopefully I don't live to regret it. But 33% chance of success is not as low as I would like it to be, to be perfectly honest. All right, so with the railway now fully employed, we're actually seeing the full amount of, uh, you know, engines that are required and the full amount of transportation that's being produced all that means is that the engine import route that we have going on over here is no longer unproductive because the amount of goods actually being moved back and forth has become enough to make this a viable trade route but it does seem as though we still won't be upgrading to level two because of a couple of reasons but it seems to be doing just fine for the time being though i'm surprised at the cost of transportation over here despite the very little what I thought uh, requirement for transportation. Not sure where it's all being uh, used up in terms of buy orders. It's simply through population consumption. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. All right, it is what it is. Let's go ahead and invest in a couple of these upgrades for some of our manufacturing industries and agricultural industries in South Bengal as well, though. The dye plantations, for example, make a pitiful amount of money as is. So why don't we go ahead and get them using rail transportation. That'll get rid of 12K laborers over here who are, I suppose, no longer needed to move goods back and forth. And that should change the productivity by a significant amount over here. Ooh, looks like it actually hurt productivity. I guess it's because transportation is still so expensive. Fair enough, fair enough. Lesson learned, not an option yet. And I think upgrading the railways isn't an option yet either because the investment pool just hasn't grown by enough. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to leave this be for the time being. We're going to accumulate some further wealth in the investment pool, continue to upgrade the railway in South Bengal, continue to improve not just the railway itself, but the infrastructure over here too as a result of the upgrades to the railway. And then we'll go ahead and invest in some of those production method changes that I was hoping to get done sooner rather than later. But hey, it's all good. We need to make sure we don't... Uh, uh, overextend ourselves either and at the same time let's not forget the coal mines themselves are a bit of an overextension but are desperately needed I think because we are uh, definitely hurting as far as the cost of coal is concerned and it's kind of necessary across the board across the entire empire so this was a worthwhile investment the railways I think can still wait just a little while longer and yet another new political movement has kicked off this one's trying to preserve the fact that we don't have police right now their support is very low but the radicalism is at a medium level. We currently have a revolution brewing already from the desire to enact landed voting. I don't think they're accumulating any strength, so we're fine on this front for the time being, but if they want to try and pull something here, they'll just have 26 soldiers or 26 battalions, I should say, which I'm not really worried about. All right, these coal mines have been completed. Hopefully we can see a bit of a bump over here, or rather the opposite of a bump, a valley in the price over here. 
Beautiful stuff. Love to see that gold turn silver when it's about stuff that we're using locally at the very least. Hopefully it'll go down a little bit further. And don't forget, coal isn't just important for our various industries, but the pops as well. They use coal to heat their homes. So the lower this price is, the better it is for the whole radicalism situation as well. And with all the construction having come to a close, we are looking at a pretty solid balance over here. Money is looking fantastic. I'd love to get rid of this bureaucratic shortfall because that would just get us a nice extra push of money. It might even take us all the way up to plus 50k, but hey, I'll take what I can get for the time being. This is looking pretty sweet, and of course, as uh, South Bengal continues to become more and more incorporated, it has become one of our more prosperous and vital sources of income. I'm just going to get Delhi to start using the standardized filing system to get us into that positive and avoid that tax waste. Just helps ever so slightly, makes me just a little bit happier, and I don't think the price of paper has become too atrociously expensive as a result of that decision either, so I'm comfortable enough with that, and in a worst case scenario, we'll make some adjustments and invest perhaps in the uh, paper mills a little bit further too. They'll be able to cover, I think, most of the cost of construction with a little bit left over at the end for us to cover ourselves, and that's fine by me. I'm okay with splitting the uh, duties half and half like that. That's perfectly fine. Uh, but let's take a look at this opportunity over here. Credit where credit's due. The recent investment in Punjab production at our paper mills has raised the question who should get the credit for the boost in production. Where would we be without our money, our factories, and our goods? Let all those in the nation know the work and struggle of those who participated and made this great feat possible. So do we want to credit the industrialists, making them a little bit more likely to grow in size? Is this a victory for the workers instead, or should we focus this on someone else? I don't think the, the petite bourgeoisie requires any of our uh, approval over here. Uh, and in fact, I, I don't want to upset the industrialists and the trade unions. Again, the industrialists in particular are the ones who would cause tax avoidance if they get too upset. Very fitting. Folks, it is almost time to celebrate with the next week coming. We will go from having a credit to having gold reserves. That feels fantastic. No more interest owed. We're still making a decent chunk of change. This is feeling very good right now. Let's try and get those gold reserves at least a little built up as we now get the dedicated police force. Talk about timing. Immediately, we're going to take a hit to our bureaucracy and a massive amount of tax waste that's going to eat away at the beautiful balance we had. We went from 50k to 33k. That is no joke of a reduction. 17k gone just like that. But hey, you know what? Maybe this will actually benefit us like we'd hoped, and uh, we're not that far away from the full incorporation of South Bengal. Just 14 more months with this tax waste happening. That's something we can manage, right? We'll be fine, right? Yeah, look, stock exchange got unlocked at the same time too, reducing the bureaucratic cost of trade routes, so that's uh, poetic justice, I suppose. I'll take what I can get, but hey, we're still in the positive, which is a genuine surprise. What I don't like, though, is the sudden bump in radicals. We went from 18 point something to 19, and I'm not sure why that happened. I'm trying so hard to drop this number without, uh, you know, throwing off this number, and I, I almost wonder if uh, you can only have one or the other. I say I wonder, but uh, I'm very much familiar with the answer. Trying to find that sweet spot, trying to find that balance, but just don't know uh, if, we're, if we're going to see success there. And what is this? First of all, dialectics is spreading, not going to affect us in the near future because we're not looking to invest in an additional institution. Thank you very much, but hey, let the spread happen. And at the same time, up over here, it looks like Portugal wishes to enter into a defensive pact with us. Now, I can't imagine anyone in our vicinity picking a fight with us in the near future, so I don't think I need a defensive pact. I mean, we're getting along great with the Great Qing. Russia has a bit of a buffer between us and them, so that's not a concern. The concern is what uh, Great Britain, perhaps, might be doing in the Iberian Peninsula or, uh, you know, down in Africa where there is a Portuguese presence. I don't think this defensive pact favors us. I think it very much favors Portugal, and let's not forget, Portugal does need to go away because uh, they're currently sitting at, yes, Goa, and while we get along with them for the time being, that is not a permanent plan. So we will be declining this defensive pact. Thank you for asking, though. We are less than a year away from war with the East India Company, ladies and gentlemen. Money is looking good. Radicalism is there still, I suppose. What else can I say about that? But things are looking 
quite swell as far as declaring our next war. This is where we're going to call it a session though, a quick lesson on recovering your economy and bringing it to a point where you're able to declare a fresh war and just stay afloat as I'll prove to you next time. If you enjoyed this session folks, don't hesitate to hit that like button and let me know by leaving a comment down below as well. If you have any thoughts or feedback or opinions you'd like to share, go ahead and do so in the comments down below as well. If you haven't yet subscribed, feel free to subscribe because Victoria 3 is here to stay on the channel as well as a bunch of other strategy gaming as well. But of course, as always, a massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time. Cheers.